You cowards. You absolute cowards from House of the Dragon. How dare you? How dare you? That's right, it's your main man Z, and we are here to talk a little bit about House of the Dragon. And you may have caught our short 10 second reviews so far. It's not too bad. I'm a little skeptical as to what happened based on our previous experience with Game of Thrones and, and what we're getting. It, you know, I'm not a big fan. We've all heard about the catastrophe that was season eight and prior to that, basically when they ran out of material. But we're, now we're going to talk about what happened between the first two episodes. And I'm not going to talk about spoilers. I'm going to talk about the intro or lack there of intro. But before we get into it, just want a reminder, like, subscribe. If you think you, uh, you like what we're doing here, give us an old subscribe. We appreciate it as we'll keep bringing you more of this type of content. And let's get into it because I'm not the only one who thought this. And I hate to agree with IGN. But we're going to take a look at a little bit of the intro. We're going to talk about it. So I'm going to play this, and hopefully I don't get copyright stricken. But as we see, the intro didn't get played until the second episode, which I thought was really strange. Uh, the, fir the first episode very much lacked it. And one of the things that I think really drew you in to the original Game of Thrones was the introduction. And obviously, the song... Iconic. <laughs> you know, epic. Great stuff. This is uh, it's a little bit of a cop-out, right? So, what we have here, it appears to be what I... My interpretation is we're getting crests of the different families and houses that are joined between the Targaryens and Valerian and, and all the uh, different... Things that go on in the original book where they talk about this person being united with that person and their bloodlines mixing until what we get today. Now let's put all that aside for one second and let's talk about the original Game of Thrones. Now, what I really liked about the original Game of Thrones intro is you would get all the different houses, but you would get the cities because we're talking about world building. And I know it's a different show and I think it really comes down to originality, you know? Like here, they're showing us King's Landing, and King's Landing, you know, expands, which is really awesome. You get to see the different household crests. It's very clear what they're trying to depict. Like, here's where we're going to be in the story, and then here's where we may also potentially show up. And what I really liked about this was the fact that it was like, here's Winterfell. They're... they're giving you a taste, if you will, kind of like what they did with Ozark, of what was going to happen and where you were going to be in this episode. Where are you going? You're going to go to Winterfell. You're going to go to King's Landing. You're going to go to the various towns. Maybe we'll go to the Wall. And and here it is on the map, and here's where we're going. And it kind of helped you, if you were really paying attention, figure out exactly where the story was going to lead for that particular episode. And I thought that was a really good bit of foreshadowing and gave you a really good idea of what that looked like and what the world was composed of and, and giving you a, a bigger idea of the world at large. This gives us nothing. This gives us bloodlines about which we don't know anything about. And from my understanding, and I have not read the book, the House of the Dragon books are very much based on J.R. Tolkien's works especially around the similarian where he's talking about the different households and the how and the bloodlines that match up and this begot this begot this begot this and they all well, you know like this person was related to this person so here we have an article from ign and they say uh they finally reveal their opening sequence in episode two kind of confusing they did it as a creative choice as to get to the story. <laughs> what? And don't get me wrong. I am giving it a um, mediocre... Like, I'm lukewarm to the show right now. I know we're getting to know people. We're getting to know the characters and different things. Matt Smith is great. 
I hear there's some big changes a, a brewing, which I'm not, maybe not such a huge fan of, but I will stay optimistic. I, I'm not in love with the show, but I'm also not going to rip it too bad. So far, it looks fine. Everything seems like it's going in a place that people seem to enjoy. Not a lot has happened, but that's all right. But they didn't get a new theme song, which is very strange to me. Like, that seems to me like the coward's way out. Like, they were so scared of alienating their audience and doing something original and different. That they're like, oh my lord, we can't play any new songs. And you know what's fascinating? In episode two itself, if you listen and, I, and go back and check it out, there's some really good musical cues and themes in that part, in parts of those episodes where I thought they were actually really good and could have been like a haunting um, intro to the show. So why are they doing this? Cowards, that's why. They're freaking cowards. They were too chicken to just get in on it. Because I know they're super scared. Apparently, it's already been renewed for a second season. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, you know, I think they're just... Uh, they're just scared of what's going on. But that's my criticism. I just thought it was... First, when I was watching the episode, this the second episode, I was like, okay, this is this is the coward's way out. So Ryan Condal and Miguel Sapacino Chini, <laughs> you wimps. Just you have a great composer. Ask the dude, make me another great song. What are you doing? And like I said, in the in the show itself, you have some really good in, in, original music, but now you're just giving us the st- we had the same theme for eight years. We know it's iconic. We know it's epic. We know all of those things. But don't be wimps. Just get, just, just own it. Just be. It's a new thing. You're new showrunners. You're different people. Don't be Benny Hoff and Weiss. Everybody hates those guys. They haven't even made anything of any value whatsoever. They had one tiny movie on Netflix, which wasn't was just okay. Please do better. Do better. <laughs> <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Anyway, uh, what do you think? Are you do you like the new show? Do you like the intro? I think the intro is is it's weaker by just reusing the same thing, and other people are are complaining about it. And I also don't like the lack of you're not going to have to make a new model every time you want to do a new episode. You know, in the eight seasons of Game of Thrones, you had new models for all the different cities we were going to. Well, now you just have the two, the bloodlines, and that's probably never going to change, so you're never going to have to make a new one. So, I... Come on, people. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think below. Do you like it? Do you like some of the music that's playing that uh, could be possibly a better theme? Not a better theme, but a different theme than what you're already hearing. Are you Game of Thrones fans sticking this one out? I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to review it for you guys. Keep tuned for more 10-second reviews from us, and we'll do a full-season breakdown. If you want a little bit more in-depth analysis, let us know. And we might even have some funny sketches around House of the Dragon coming at you as well. But as for myself, um, you can catch me and my partner, Noob Noob. Uh, partner as in uh, my co-host <laughs> on the show. <laughs> we do a, a podcast as well, which you can catch at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Friday nights. It's live streamed here on YouTube. You can catch us on a bunch of other places as well. And uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Rumble, all the other good places. But as for me, I am on to the next one.